Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to discuss HEI distributors, some symptoms I'm going through, how to diagnose it, how to fix it, most importantly, a road test. So, the reason we're here is I'm clearly having some issues. If you're new to the channel, by the way, welcome. I just finished a playlist where I strengthened the chassis of the GTO. It was four episodes long, a ton of work. I promised a road test, but the car's not operational because five episodes ago, another link right there, we went and hit the autocross track. Had a blast until the car started misbehaving. So that's exactly what we're gonna to do today is go through the things I experienced, why I'm targeting my HEI distributor as the root cause, and we'll go through how to fix it. So if I help you out, consider getting a hat. There's a link below, subscribe if you haven't. So let's get things started. I'm gonna show you a clip of what happened at the autocross track. Crazy behavior, right? So the car is basically falling on its face, no power, misfiring it sounds like. So I limp over to the Willwood booth, park the car, I'm dicking with wires, etc. Go to crank the car up, doesn't start. So now my mind is blown, I don't know what's going on. And a lot of you guys left some really good comments on that video in, in particular where it could have been vapor lock, um, the Fitech unit, the uh, maybe some bad wiring or loose connection. So I don't think it's vapor lock. I have a fuel pressure gauge at the throttle body. I did a video on that too. So I have fuel pressure at all times. Uh, vapor lock is usually the pump is trying to pump vapor so you have less pressure and uh, especially fuel injected cars don't like that. So uh, number two was the Fitech unit. I'm gonna get to that in a second. Three bad wiring, maybe. So now I wait a few minutes, the car starts. Like nothing had happened. I said, you know what? The car started. I'm just going to go home. A hundred miles. So I drive a hundred miles. I limp at home and I get like two blocks from my house. Yeah, two blocks. And this guy's revving on me at a light. So I said, you know what? Let's go. It's go time. I made it this far. Hit 3,500 3, RPM or so. Car dies. What the hell? So now I'm on the side of the road trying to noodle this whole thought, right? And it dawns on me, I did a video where I was troubleshooting a starting problem with the Phytech unit. That's right there. Where one of the diagnostic tools they have is a handheld that you can actually monitor the RPM while you're cranking. If it's zero, the system is not getting a tax signal. That's interesting. Then it dawned on me, I have a data log that I had started. Check this chart out. This is the data log that I pulled from the unit at that point. Notice it got up to 3,300 RPM and went directly to zero. If your engine goes from 3,300 to zero, you got a much bigger problem than an ignition system. So clearly I coasted to a stop in gear. The engine didn't go right to zero, but the Phytech unit was not receiving any data from the distributor. That's why we're gonna look at the distributor. So some of the causes here are the, are the symptoms, just so you're keeping track. Uh, the car's hot or warm. Uh, anything past 2,500 RPM, there's an issue. No data from the tack line, okay? So uh, doing some Googling on my own, that could be the coil. So we're gonna test that. That could be a pickup coil. We're gonna test that too. It could be the HEI module itself. Now that we can't test. That you have to take to like AutoZone or some big brand uh, car parts company and they can typically have an HEI module tester. And But even then, they have to test it three, four, or five times to make sure it gets hot enough to show any misbehavior at temperature. So electronics don't like temperature and this thing is like 10 years old. So it, that's probably it. I'm going to change it anyway. Okay. So we're going to get into that. So having said all that, let's go hit the work, hit the workbench, show you how to, how to test each one of those pieces and we'll check for any other damage. Let's do it. All right. Some basics for you guys. If you didn't know th these type of uh, high energy ignition systems came out in the mid seventies, all the major car manufacturers came out with them to improve fuel economy. The idea is if you can get more volts to the spark plug, you can burn more fuel and more fuel burn means more power. Now aftermarket like Davis unified here, uh, this thing puts out 50,000 volts, which means you can increase your uh, plug gap 
and, and theoretically get more power or at least more efficient, right? So to test Spark, the very first thing you should do while this is in the car, you can take one of the plugs off and you get one of these plug testers. So you, you just put it in and you ground it out on anything metal inside. And if this, if this is working correctly, you'll get a spark in there and you'll see it. And it's a safe way to test it. So that's number one. Number two, and some people do forget that when you upgrade to a distributor like this, you need a bigger power lead. So I have a 10 gauge wire, but this one needs a 12 gauge minimum. So then here's our tack line. This is the, this is the issue that we're having. So with the Phytech unit, um, there, the Phytech connection is also at the same point on the same connector. So that's what we're gonna research. Before I forget, the other thing you can do in the car is take the power lead off, connect it to your voltmeter and measure the volts while cranking. So while cranking, you need more than 10 and a half volts. If you don't have that number, there's something wrong with your battery or your power connections. So make sure you have that 10 and a half volts. And obviously while we're looking at the cap, check for any, any anomalies in here. So make sure this is still in good condition. Make sure that your, the pointer on the distributor has not touched these when it was spinning around. Because if you mount this incorrectly, like cockeyed, you can get some interference in there and do some damage. So, but now that we're here, we're gonna go ahead and take this cap off. There's three uh, quarter inch nut screws on here. So we're gonna take the cap off and test that coil. Okay, I got those fasteners out. Let's take this cap off. Voila. Now, first test is going to test what's called the primary coil. And that's the, we're gonna measure the ohms between the red and white. I'm sorry, not red and white, red and yellow. So between the red and yellow, 0.5. Our spec is 0.3 to 1.5 ohms. I'll put that down below as well. So now that that specs out correctly, we are gonna take the coil out, flip it over. So we have four screws to remove. Just be careful. Don't accidentally touch these wires just in case. So I went ahead and pushed these up from the bottom that are from inside. So I got them separated. Now I should be able to lift this straight out like that and turn it upside down. I actually put it on end like so. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to measure between that little center and this round ring right here. All right, a target here is between 6,000 and 10,000 ohms. So I'm holding the negative on, the, on that ring and then going to that center dot. 9.134-ish, that is to spec. So I can go ahead and put this back together and then we'll go ahead and take that blue cap off to get at that module because the magnetic pickup is under the module or we have to get to that connector to test that one. Now if the screws are out, you can gently pull on this unit. It should come off. Don't pull too far because this is still wired to the back. So I'm going to take that side off first. Probably doesn't matter which side. And there's our module. There's also grease on the back. There's dielectric grease that's used as to prevent arcing, but it's also used as a heat transfer medium because that's the heat sink. So when this heats up and then it utilizes the, the back of the distributor as a heat sink as well. Pretty neat. So uh, while we're here, now we can test the magnetic pickup coil. So the magnetic pickup coil is this round thing based back in there. And we just have to test the ohms in between those two connectors. So our target is between 800 and 1,000 ohms. 979. Well, that's the spec. So we tested the main coil, the secondary coil, the pickup coil, and they all measured good. That means this guy is suspect, right? At least in my opinion. So I went to order one of these and the lead time is two months. Yeah, not conducive to getting your car back on the road, right? But the cool thing is most of these are universal. So you can get a different module as long as it's the four pin, um, you can actually swap it in there. So check out what I found. So here's the flamethrower unit I got. 
and it comes with new grease because we're gonna have to put that on. But the cool thing here is one, I mentioned earlier, this is uh, HEI3, which is their MSD version. So it's multiple spark, which is a little win. The other win with this is we can set a max RPM or ma an RPM cutout. The, eight, the DUI unit does not have that feature, so you can over rev. So that's cool. So we'll go through how to set that up today too. Um, let's do that now. Here's how we change the rev limiter. So when these things come out of the box, they're already set at 5,500 RPM. Let's go ahead and target 5,800. And the way you do this is you get a nine volt battery. You can see where my positive leads are connected. There's a ground strap right here that I'm, I'm tied to and the negative on the battery. So we're gonna go ahead and use this pot in the middle with a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm gonna go full clockwise till it stops and then full counterclockwise and it starts to flash. So the long pulse and a short pulse means there's nothing set yet. Basically the rev limiter is deactivated. So let's turn it and see what happens. So I'm going clockwise. And what we're going to looking for are long beeps or long flashes. So let's go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's 5,600. So I'm going to go a little bit more. I want 58. Let's see how we did here. One, two, three, four, five, five thousand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, fifty-eight hundred. Yes. So we're going to let that do that three or four times to get it in the memory. So you let that cycle a few times and that firmly puts it in memory and now we can reinstall it. So put that grease all over the back. It's okay if you, how much you put on there because when you, we put it in there, we'll wipe off the excess if any comes out. And well, now that I'm thinking about it, we should probably examine this wire harness because I did see when I was Googling that you can buy these harnesses. So let's see here. So it looks like I crimped it accidentally. I think this comes apart. Sorry, I got grease on my fingers. So it might be tough to tell in video, but look how mangled that brown wire is. And maybe the black wire too, but the brown one's concerning. So I'm gonna get a test on that because on this end, the brown wire is the tack wire. What the fuck? What in the hell? Why is that? That connector is not the same depth. Do you see that? And it's loose. What the hell? You've got to be kidding me. Well, gentlemen, ladies, I think we just found the issue because this is the tack lead. That, that bar that you saw that comes across the, the cap uh, over here, remember underneath this cap, there was that connector to the coil. That's where this plugs in. That's that side. You've got to be shitting me right now. Oh my God. Okay, let's... And you guys see that little tang? That's not supposed to be bent back. So that tells me it's supposed to be just slightly above this surface. So when you push it in, it locks in. See that little ridge down in there? It's supposed to lock in on that ridge. And so you can't push it out. So clearly when I pushed it in one too many times, I actually got it past that point. So man, so that means it was like touching like this. That explains everything. That means it worked in low RPM. The RPMs go up, more power goes through here and that's too much resistance. It heats this up. You gotta be kidding me right now. Jesus. Brown wire, 
0.6 red wire is the top one and that just came out what in the hell holy shit okay so do you see that that's the tang i'm talking about that one isn't even like above elevation so it's not locking in there you have got to be kidding me i'm i'm decided to take this out and do a better job measuring so there's this one screw right there it should just come out okay so this is what the harness looks like it's just that one screw and good news is this is also a very similar or the same as gm harnesses so i'm gonna go google one whatever one i can get here the quickest is going in so i wanted to give you guys a better look at this thing so i cannot pull the middle connector out which is the way it's supposed to work the way to get it out of there you need something really small to push up on that tang i showed you it comes out the back like that so there's that's how it should look so when you when you push it in the connector you see those those edges down there it locks on those edges watch you hear it snap now it's locked in it's exactly how those are supposed to work that one's barely there and this one got totally deformed so it got bent backwards and pulled out you gotta be kidding me three days later got a new harness this is actually a pertronics harness wire colors match connectors match and look the wires don't come out <laughs> oh man this is even um put together better I'm, I'm pretty sure this is just because of age this i could take this case off but uh, i'm going to retain the same screw and lock washer put it back in the distributor before we do that i'm going to test fit this in the cap all right fits in the cap just fine and those connectors are not coming out i should have noticed that but now now that's something we can all pay attention to so i'll take this off mount this in the distributor and put that module in finally we are good to go one thing you want to, i want to point out i had to push this into that slot so it's a nice tight fit. It actually fits better than the last harness. Uh, maybe the last harness was just too old. Um, so if you're wondering, you can change this while it's in the car. And you can program it while it's in the car. But there are different instructions to program it. So read the instructions when you get it if you go with this um, flamethrower module. So I'm going to put everything back together, throw it in the car. Let's crank her up. Okay, here we go. I haven't started the car yet. I haven't set the timing yet. I don't know how fast it's going to start, but I bring that up because the flamethrower module, they tout that it's supposed to help with your starting because it's a multiple spark discharge. So I have no idea if I'm going to be able to tell. Um, the car starts pretty quickly on its own because it's fuel injected. So uh, here we go. So I start the car. I have to set the timing. Then we'll do a little road test. Fuel pressure, fire in the hole. Hey yo! All right, I get to set the timing now. Okay, it's the next day. I had to give the car a bath and uh, yesterday. So now I need to go to the gas station. This gives me an opportunity to get the engine heated up. I'm on vapor, so we need some fuel for our test and our road trip. And this test drive is actually two things, remember? So we have the chassis stiffening project. Still curious how it's going to feel, so I don't know yet. And, of course, after the gas station, I do have my handheld unit from Phytech. Uh, once I start the car at the gas station, I will turn on data logging. And that will be our backup for data, just in case the same issue happens again. Let's cross our fingers it doesn't. But then I can push the car over 3,500 RPM and see what happens i do not want to break down again so we'll see how it goes i got another camera in the back uh, it's the same camera equipment and mic we used at the autocross event so that'll capture any um, noises that we hear just like we did at autocross so uh here we go fire it up
Let's do this. All right, just dropped my $60 on 10 gallons. Get data loggings on. Let's go find a nice strip of road here to open her up. I got her to 3,000 on the way to the gas station. There were no issues. And I know I was reviewing that one data log. Um, I think it was 3,300 was the magic number. So we're gonna find out. So I've gone through a couple heat cycles on the fan. So we got plenty of heat in the engine. Should be enough heat around the distributor. It's about 90 degrees out today. Um, my temperature gauge says 198. So just need a nice clear stretch of road so I can get up to, I want to really push 4,500, 5,000 RPM. I'm not going to test the rev limiter. Thanks so much. <laughs> That's just in case. Wow, I was pretty excited there. We got up to 5,000 RPM, no issues, and a ton more power. I think that wiring was the problem, and I've had that problem for a long time, I'm guessing, because the other symptom that went away was backfiring when downshifting. I always thought that was because of the Phytech unit that I didn't get it, haven't got it tuned yet, but I suspect it's misfiring because the module wasn't getting enough juice to operate correctly, if that makes any sense. So if you have an HEI unit, go check the wiring, make sure it is tight and uh, so you don't lose any power because I felt tremendous more power, especially on the higher end, so I, it's like a new car. Speaking of driving like a new car, the new chassis system, it, I can't explain it, but the car feels planted like it's not going anywhere. I purposely ran over a couple manhole covers and the car did not budge. It just went straight over it or before I can kind of feel like a, like a Cadillac, right? So I'm excited. I can't wait to take my next on-ramp. Now in the next few weeks, if you subscribe if you haven't, we're going to go back under the hood and start experimenting with different fan sizes on my radiator and even change the radiator out to a um, a cold case radiator and see what it does to performance of cooling. So that's next on the agenda. Yeah, a lot of work on my end, but education for you guys uh, and me too. So you guys know the drill. Build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.